a single prompt to set up a whole software company. The project is called MetaGPT, the multi-agent framework. It takes one line requirement as an input and outputs user story, competitive analysis, requirements, data structure, APIs, and documents. Everything by using the power of large language models. Basically, there are a number of different agents that are working together. So for example, you have a boss agent that comes up with the requirements. Then you have a product manager agent that writes the PRDs. There is an architect agent, project manager agent. There are engineers who implement the code. And then there is a QA agent, which looks at the quality of the implementation. It's an amazing project because with a single line of requirement, it feels like you have a whole group of people who are implementing different things for you. And you get these great visuals of the architecture as well. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step installation process. I'll show you how to set it up on your local machine. And then I'll walk you through an example project. We'll also look at some of the limitations of the system. Okay, so we will start with a step-by-step -step installation process. First and foremost, we need to create a Conda virtual environment. For this, you need to have Conda set up on your local machine. The first command that we're going to be using is Conda create dash n, which means a new virtual environment. Let's call it meta GPT. Then we want to use the Python version. So I like to use Python uh, 3.10.0. Now, in this case, I have already a virtual environment named meta GPT. So it's asking me whether I want to uh, remove the existing virtual environment. So I'm going to say no. Right. But in your case, you need to say yes, and it will go on and create the virtual environment for you. After that, we need to activate the virtual environment that we just created. So I'm going to type conda activate and then meta GPT. And you see that the virtual environment is now activated on my computer. Next, we need to check if you have node installed on our machine. The way you check it is you type npm and then dash dash version. I'm running this on a MacBook and I have already installed npm. Uh, so that's why I see this. But let's say if you don't have npm installed, then you're going to type brew install npm and that is going to reinstall npm on your system. If you are on a Windows machine, the process is a bit different. In that case, you need to go to the Node.js website and simply download the installer, install it on your machine, and then restart your virtual environment. We also want to install the uh, Mermaid package. So in order to do that, on my MacBook, I'm just going to copy this part without the sudo. That's for installing on a Linux machine. So we'll come back to our terminal, simply paste that command, and hit enter. So this will basically install the Mermaid uh, JS package. Okay, next we need to actually clone the repo. So for that, we will go to this green button, click on it, click on local, and then simply copy the repo link. Now here on the terminal, you need to have git installed on your machine. I'm going to use the git clone command, then paste the link that we just copied, hit enter, and that will start downloading all the files in the repo. After this, we need to actually um, move to this uh, folder. So for that, we're going to use CD, which is basically change directory, and then meta GPT, if you type LS, so it will give us all the files that are present within that folder. Okay, before doing anything else, I'm gonna go open that folder here. All right, so this is the folder uh, where we downloaded uh, the repo. I'm going to simply click on open. That will open the folder in a Visual Code Studio session. Okay, so it opened that folder in another session. So let me go to the terminal, click new terminal. And now we need to just uh, reactivate the virtual environment that we created. So I'm going to go back and type in conda, activate, and then meta uh, GPT. That will bring us back to our virtual environment. I also need to see, okay, so I'm actually already here. I don't need to CD into that folder. Okay, so they have provided uh, both the setup as well as requirements.txt file. So you can use either one of them in order to install all the required packages. On their documentation, they recommend to use uh, setup.py. So let's uh, try this command. So here I'll just paste that command. 
and run this command so it will start downloading all the required packages and start installing uh, those packages okay so the installation is complete i think the only error that we got it's not able to find httpx but that is required by the entropic uh, models so we'll simply ignore this for the time being okay so we need to set a few more things before we can start working on uh, meta gpt so first we need to uh, set some configurations so come here to the config folder then there is a yaml file click on this the first thing you want to do is to set your openai api key so i copied my openai api key and i'm gonna just paste it here now a few other things to notice uh, by default it's using the gpt4 model you can set the maximum and number of tokens that you want uh, and you can also have the rpm uh, set here now apart from the open ai models there is support for other models as well so for example if you want to use uh, azure endpoints so you can set those here uh, for search you can set up different search engines uh, there is even support for text to speech so for example this is a uh, text to speech uh, using azure right uh, so there are different things that you can uh, configure in here uh, based on your application but for this introductory video i simply set the open AI api key in the project okay so how exactly do you run this so for that we're going to look at uh, this simple tutorial so there are a few ways you can do this so for example uh, in order to start creating things you need to use this startup.py script then you need to provide a one line requirement so let's say we say write a cli snake game right and then there are a couple of options that you can set so for example uh, if you set the implementation to false it will simply come up with the requirements and design docs but not actually implement the project but if you set it to uh, true it will write the code for you similarly if you want to uh, do code reviews basically uh, it will implement the project and then it will do a code review in order to improve the project you need to set this flag but keep in mind in that case uh, it's going to be using extra tokens and it will be costly so what we're going to do is i'm going to simply copy this example prompt and then uh, i'm going to use this implement equal to true so that it actually implements the code okay so i wanted to check uh, the startup.py file for a default parameters so in this case for the startup function the implement is set to true run tests is set to false that, that's the unit test and code review is also set to false but if you come down uh, actually even implement is set to false so by the default it's not going to implement the code right so we'll have to uh, manually provide that so I'm, what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the command that we copied and after that i'm going to say dash dash implement and we will set this to true uh, for this example i'm not going to set code review to true because that's going to use extra tokens and let's see what it comes up with okay and we run into an issue it says no module named six so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, also run the installation using the requirements file and let's see if that fix it if not then we are going to manually install that package okay so uh, the requirements installation is complete let's run this command again and let's see what we get now it started the process so it loaded the configuration it says it can cost up, uh, up to three dollars so that's the total investment that we're making then uh, here are the project or product goals so create a cli snake game that is easy to play and, and understand then based on these requirements it even came up with uh, user stories so basically for software engineers or product managers you uh, create different user stories now it also does the competitive analysis which will come up with competitive quadrant chart so we'll look at uh, some of the plots and uh, images that it generates so it talks about how it's going to implement it uh, it's going to implement these different python files apart from the python files it also is going to implement data structures and interface definitions 
Now, this seems, this seems to be an evolution of projects like GPT Engineer and Ader, and it's doing a pretty good job so far. Now, here you can see it started implementing the code. Okay, while this is being implemented, let's go and see this workspace folder. So if you click on this, it actually created another folder inside called uh, CLI Snake Game. Uh, and within there, there's another uh, CLI Snake Game, which is actually implementing all the uh, Python files right now. But then there is this uh, docs folder in there, which has the uh, different specifications as well as the task, uh, the PRD's system design, right? And then there is another folder uh, called resources. So let's open this up. Now within this folder, you will see that it implemented uh, different charts. So for example, here's a competitive analysis. It creates this quadrant, for example, high engagement, low engagement, low reach, high reach, and then uh, it puts different competitors in here. Okay, so here's a more practical example. So I was actually uh, trying to build a voice assistant. So it went ahead and did some market analysis and the uh, competitors that you see, I did not define them. For example, it says Google Assistant, uh, Microsoft, Cortana, then IBM Watson, right? So these are the ones that it uh, founded by itself and listed in here. So that is actually pretty neat. Now for the snake game, here um, is how the API design is going to look like. So this is basically the implementation. Okay, there is even a sequence flow of how the actual implementation uh, is going to look like and which different components are going to be executed and uh, what sequence. Now here we are looking at a very simple and basic example, but it kind of gives you an idea of what is possible with MetaGPT. So the implementation is done. It cost us uh, almost 0.6 dollars. Our max budget was around 3 dollars. And for this simple project, it used 2,746 tokens uh, for prompt and only 54 tokens for completion. Okay, uh, let's look at the actual implementation and see if this is going to work or not. So we're going to go to the CLI folder. Now in here, it also generated a requirements.txt file uh, that is specific to the project. And if you see here, it has two packages that needs to be installed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will actually change the directory to this workspace. So CD workspace, then CLI snake game. And let's list all the files. So there is this requirements.txt file in here. So rather than creating a new virtual environment, let's just install uh, everything in the same virtual environment that we are currently working in. So we're going to say, uh, pip install and then requirements.txt file. Okay, so it will simply download those two files. Okay, so there was a small issue with the uh, curses package. So I had to rerun it again and I simply asked it not to use the curses package. And this uh, seems to be working. So let's run this and see how it looks like. Okay, so oh, okay, I am terrible at this. Let's run this again. Okay, <laughs> I'm dead. So uh, it seems to be working, although it's pretty fast. I think we can adjust that. Uh, it doesn't have any score indicator in here. You can also adjust that by adding that into the requirements. Now, in terms of the project roadmap, uh, they have some really interesting features in the roadmap that they are currently working on. So this project is going to evolve over time. We would love to see what the community will be able to do with this project. If you found this video useful, consider liking the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.